Hey everyone, I'm Jessica with that hashtag show, and I'm here today with Matthew Lillard and Bill Rayer, who are two co-founders of Beetle and Grimm's Gaming, and they're here to talk about their new Dungeons and Dragons TV show, Faster Purple Worm Kill Kill. Um, I've already seen the first episode. Very oh. exciting. One of the great things about this show in particular, I know that D and D TV shows have really taken off recently, but I think a common theme in the ones that I've seen is that they're very much about the long game, right? So it's dozens or hundreds of episodes dedicated to a campaign, whereas for this show, the entire premise is that no one is going to survive. Uh, you're going to have a one-off uh, and you're not going to make it out alive. Tell me about how you came up with the premise for the show. That's right. We we are the SVU of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Perfect tagline. I love that. Really, I love that. Um, yeah, look, we, we found the same thing. Look, I think that there's incredible gameplay out there in the D&D world, in the TTRPG space, where you can go and watch years and years of content. Um, and Critical Role is obviously the juggernaut in the space. And look, we as a company, we as players wanted to use our creativity to tell stories. We wanted to expand our company. We thought, you know, streaming games would be a, uh, there's a solution, but we didn't, we knew we couldn't compete at that level. It's also not how we consume, you know, we are all dads um, and we don't watch three hour games, which is, so we wanted to build something that would relate to us. And Bill came up with this incredible idea, which is. Yeah. Um, so. I, I think the yeah. You know, uh, just to add to what Matt was saying, I think it's also not the way that we play Dungeons and Dragons. I think there there are, there are an infinite number of ways to play D and D, and that's what makes it wonderful. That's what makes it personal. Um, we have always at our game tables when we play together, there's always been a sort of irreverence um, to it. That's just in our personality. There's also always been a big performative aspect to it. Four of the five of us are, um, we met in acting school together. So we are hams and uh, we we love to, you know, make the big, the big grand performances out of our characters. And, um, and we, we wanted to create something that would, um, that would really speak to that particular kind of gameplay. Um, but we did want it to be accessible. We did want it to be um, something that a, a non d d enthusiast could really enjoy. So we started to think a lot about, well, how can you make an hour show that is a standalone show that is still true to the heart and soul of Dungeons and Dragons, this game that we love? Um, and, um, you know, the more we thought about it, the more we thought, well, the easiest way to keep every episode to an hour is if you just kill everybody at the end. <laughs> and then and then there's nothing to carry on. You can just move on to the next episode. So um, we, it, you know, it started out as sort of a joke um, that that and it is still a very funny thing. But um but we've come to realize through the experience of shooting 20 episodes with 20 different casts that um, the format really allows the storytelling to go in a lot of different directions. And all the episodes feel different. Um, some of them are high energy. Some of them are more serious. Some of them are very comedic. Um, some of them find some really dramatic and meaningful um, points to tell. And um, but I, I, hopefully they're all a lot of fun in just very different ways. Yeah, I like that you get something a little different each time you tune in. That's a fun aspect to it. It's a good point. What kind of elements did you add to the gameplay or the structure of the presentation to take it from being D&D &D that you're just playing in a group with your friends to a show that is going to have audience part participation and, you know, yeah. all the other elements? Well, one element we added cameras because we never played for the cameras. Uh, no, uh, it's a great question. So we, so one of the things we did is that we added live accompaniment. So Scott Passarella plays every single show. He live accompanies what we're doing on stage. We added a studio audience, a very small sort of COVID regulated studio audience, which was a huge difference maker. 
Um, because every, you know, if you're playing at home or you're playing in a three hour show, there isn't that same, you know, it's hard to perform for three hours, but with an audience there and you've got a one hour show, there's like a real adrenaline to it that sort of ups the stakes. And then the third thing is we have a host. Every episode, Bill um, is the host of the show. And so Bill is constantly adding um, surprise elements for the player, surprise elements for the DM. He's, he's uh, you know, the, we do this great thing in the show where he adds an epitaph. And so as he's watching the show, you can see Bill pulling threads that he brings back and weaves back into the end of the show, which is really lovely. So, you know, there's there's a lot of things that make this different than every single other live gameplay show out there. And that's one of the things we're most excited about. Definitely. Yeah, I would just add, um, in terms of the hosting, um, you know, listen, D&D, &D, uh, one of the things that we heard when we first started talking to WotC, uh, Wizards of the Coast, about um, working on Dungeons & Dragons products um, you know, they said to us, there's no limit to the number of people who want to play D&D. &D. The limit is the number of people who can take on the DM role. And it is. It's a very challenging role. Playing at your table, being the DM, you have a lot to worry about. You have to tell the story. You're interacting with the players. You're making sure that everybody is getting their moments to contribute. Um, and when you add the performative aspect of it, that's just putting a lot of burden on one person. And the hope is that by adding a host, I'm able to take some of that forward-facing, audience-facing responsibility away from the DM so the DM can focus on telling the story in the best way possible. Um, and I can help them out by, um, you know, dealing with some of the audience interaction and just maintaining this sort of improvisational tone that's such a big part of the show. Definitely. That's a great point. It's a lot of it's a lot of work and a lot of pressure to be the DM in charge of all that and be in charge of all the NPCs and, you know, everything. So it's nice that in your structure, you can split that up a little bit. Now, you said something interesting um, about how people are interested in D&D, &D, but they need to find someone to be their DM in order to get into the game and to find the right person for that. And I wanted to ask you guys about what you think the appeal of having a D&D &D show is and someone watching a show versus just playing themselves. So is it that uh, that gameplay aspect that you think is a big appeal there? Yeah, this, it's a great question. Um, uh, I'll jump in first and Matt, then you'll probably come up with a better answer before I'm done. Um, well, I mean, to me, I think the appeal is, um, as I said before, there's an infinite number of ways to play this game. And the joy for me about watching other people play is that they will play in ways that I would never have thought of, that I would never have, have conceived of D&D as. And when you see 20 episodes of this, we have different casts for every show. Everybody brings their own personality, their own kind of storytelling. And every show ends up being really different. And a lot of them are not the way that I personally have ever experienced D&D &D before. And so getting to watch them do that um, is a real, it, it's just a real joy and, and sort of opens your mind to the possibilities for the game. Yeah, I, listen, I, I think the great thing about the show is that it's, it is a, it's a gateway drug, right? It's, it's an opportunity for people, which is what Bill just said, um, you know, to find the game, to fall in love with the game. Right. It's th there's a lot of intimidating things around D&D, &D. you know, the, the the you know, this idea like, oh, it's really hard to play. You have to, you know, th there is inhibitors to jumping in and sitting at a table. And I think one of the great things about the game is that we constantly, first of all, it's a game everyone's enjoyed and enjoy. Everyone's having fun. So I think you're seeing people having a blast, which I think will inspire people to do it. But also it's super game. It's it's, it's game mechanic light. Right, so um, it sort of allows you, again, to break down the intimidation factor of what some people may be experiencing. Definitely. And since each episode is different and we get to see you know, new characters come in and new people play the game in different ways, that's really exciting too. Also, it's a great introduction to different D&D uh, &D monsters. So do you guys have a favorite uh, monster that's come up in the show so far? I love that. What what's your favorite monster? I mean, the 
I mean, we have to say, we have to give a shout out to WizKids. WizKids did send a whole bunch of really cool um, minis, uh, which were awesome. What's your favorite? What was your favorite monster? So my my favorite monster moment, um, and and I won't say which episode this is, but um, but the the um, I, I actually have it here. I can I can I can show it off. Um, the uh, this incredible WizKids Tiamat. Um, this is this is an, the actual veteran of the show. Uh, so he, he is lowered in from the ceiling. Oh. That's so <laughs> in his big entrance, and it is it is one of the silliest, funniest moments uh, in in the entire series. So that 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 is a a memorable and joyous monster moment for me. Yeah, uh, what was the um, what was the Jared? What, what was the one where the angel came in? Oh, the solar, yeah, solar, solar was crazy. Look, I, listen, I I think that. You know, this idea that somebody's going to watch all 20 episodes and everyone dies every time. You think that the show becomes hot or that it's going to play out the same way. And I think one of the exciting things is that, as we learn through the course of production, that each show stands on its own two feet. And each one has, like, funny bits. Each one has emotional moments. Um, and each one of them is a real treat and a, a love letter to Dungeons & Dragons and 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 sitting around a table so you know we keep saying and i think one of the most important aspects of doing press like this is to just ask people to find us i mean if you're if you're reading this or you're watching this and you know it, it, it we need people in our community if they want to see shows like this we have it has to be successful whether it's our show whether it's heroes feast whether it's encounter party you know these live shows being built and put on these platforms you know, our hope is that the community comes out and and supports it, and the com that will hope hopefully continually grow the community, which you know we want to see, um, we want to see happen. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, Faster Purple Worm and Encounter Party and Heroes Feast are the first three through the door for this D and D adventures um, experiment. And um, listen, if it's successful, it's going to open the door for lots of other things and there will be other shows coming through with completely different takes on what D&D could be um and, and and they'll all be really interesting and different and unique and and we want that to happen so um if the channel is a success we will all have more success we will all see more representation more diversity of ideas and thoughts and people um represented in this space which is what we all want and so um you know we're just really hopeful that the channel itself is a success and can provide uh those opportunities from for others definitely and like you mentioned this show is hopefully going to be a really great entry point for people who are sort of just getting started in D, &D or are curious um now i know the holidays are coming up we've got gift guides and people getting ready for all of that kind of stuff do you have any recommendations from your Beetle and Grimm's collection that you think would be good gifts for people who are just getting started in D&D? So oh glad you asked. You are a doll. God bless your soul for oh. asking. <laughs> um, what, are, what do we, I mean, we do have faster perform kill kill gear, which is very exciting. That's going on sale very soon. What, this little thing? <laughs> we have, uh, we do have a Kickstarter that's out. It won't be out before Christmas. Um, but you can always support our Kickstarter. But yeah. what, uh, what, I mean, look, to me, one of the great things that we have is we have things for, we have incredible DM assets, right? We have, you know, uh, obviously our, we're known for our DM support. But for me, one of the great things we have is we have these log books, we have these journals, and we have these dice sets that are built to support players around the table. And I think that, you know, elevating somebody's personal game identifying, building things that you can help identify your character. It really, it connects you in a deeper way to your character, which I think allows for a better gameplay. I think the more you know and you love your character, the more you love the game. And so for me, I'm very player centric and I would say our dice sets and our player journals and logs are really awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for those recommendations and everyone make sure to check out Faster Purple Worm Kill Kill on November 13th. That's going to be streaming on Freebie.